After studying the relevant knowledge of electrical control systems, we have gained an understanding of electrical schematic diagrams and commonly used low voltage electrical appliances. This knowledge provides us with a theoretical foundation for analyzing electrical control systems. Now, let's return to the study of the fundamental circuit of three-phase asynchronous motors and delve into the jogging control circuit for three-phase asynchronous motors. Let's review our knowledge of electric motors. An electric motor is a device that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. It operates by energized coils to generate a rotating magnetic field, which in turn interacts with the rotor to create an electromagnetic torque, leading to rotational motion. In the realm of electric power systems, most electric motors are AC motors, which can either be synchronous motors or asynchronous motors. Among them, three-phase asynchronous motors are known for their simple structure, cost-effectiveness, durability, reliable operation, and easy maintenance. They have found widespread use in various industries and enterprises. These motors are composed of a stator, rotor, and external components. The stator is composed of a stator core, stator winding, and frame. On the other hand, the rotor primarily consists of a rotor core, rotor winding, and shaft. The direction of the movement of an energized conductor in a magnetic field is related to the direction of the current and the magnetic field lines, that is, the direction of the magnetic field. The working principle of an electric motor involves the interaction between a magnetic field and the force on an electric current, resulting in the rotation of the motor. We typically describe clockwise rotation as the forward motion of an electric motor. Based on our previous learning, when AC current is applied to the internal windings of the motor, there exists a constant phase difference between them. The motor comprises three sets of stator windings labeled UVW, which, when energized by symmetric three-phase currents following the UVW sequence, combine to generate a clockwise rotating magnetic field. In this scenario, the rotor within the motor is in a state of relative movement with the rotating magnetic field. This results in the rotor cutting through magnetic field lines, inducing current in the rotor, and consequently creating electromagnetic torque, causing the rotor to rotate. This leads to the forward rotation of the motor. You can refer to the image on the left for a review. After revisiting the fundamentals of electric motors, let's begin by understanding the concept of jogging control. Jogging control refers to a scenario where pressing a start button with your hand causes the electric motor to start running, and when you release the button, the motor stops. The duration of jogging control is determined by the length of time the operator holds down the button. In practical industrial applications, there are instances where manual intervention is required. Now that we have grasped the concept of jogging control, Let's move on to studying the jogging control circuit. When learning about a new circuit, we usually begin by examining its electrical schematic diagram. This diagram includes the fundamental components of the circuit and outlines the principles behind the entire circuit's functionality. Starting the analysis from the diagram is often a convenient approach to comprehensively understand the circuit as a whole. First, let's take a look at the schematic diagram of our jogging control circuit. As we've learned before, a schematic diagram consists of two main parts, the main circuit and the auxiliary circuit. The main circuit is typically located on the left side of the diagram, while the auxiliary circuit is situated on the right side of the diagram. The main circuit encompasses the part of the circuit through which the motor's current flows. Starting from the top and moving downwards, it includes, low voltage circuit breaker, marked as QS, as the circuit's main power switch, fuse, marked as FU1, serving as short circuit protection for the main circuit, normally open main contact of a contactor, marked as KM, which is interlocked to control the coil of the contactor, driving the motor's rotation, thermal relays thermal element, marked as FR linked to the normally closed contacts of the thermal relay in the control circuit. Providing overload protection, the target motor, 
marked as M, that needs to be driven. On the other hand, the auxiliary circuit primarily focuses on controlling the motor. Generally, in motor control, the auxiliary circuit contains only the control lines. The auxiliary circuit can also be referred to as the motor's control circuit. In the control circuit, it begins with fuse, marked as FU2, serving as short circuit protection for the main circuit, normally closed contacts of the thermal relay, FR, connected to the circuit, acting as overload protection for the control circuit, button SB1 functioning as the stop function, button SB2 acting as the jogging button to control the circuit startup. The coil of the contactor KM in which, when energized, its normally open contact in the main circuit causes the motor to start running. After comprehending the schematic diagram of the jogging control circuit and its components, the next step is to assess the various states of the circuit during its operation. Clearly, in a jogging control circuit, aside from the occurrence of faults, there are only two primary states, motor stop and motor start. However, in more complex circuits, there might be other states that require our analysis. Let's begin our analysis by considering the motor startup state in the jogging control circuit. The initiation of the electric motor startup is closely linked to the jogging button. 1. When the normally open contacts of the low voltage circuit breaker QS are closed, power sources L1, L2, and L3 are connected, resulting in the circuit being powered up. 2. Subsequently, when you press the jogging button SB2 with your hand, the normally open contacts of the button close. 3. This action leads to the activation of the control circuit, powering the coil of the contactor KM located further down the circuit. 4. Building on our previously acquired knowledge, when the coil of the contactor is energized, its electromagnetic mechanism triggers the movement of its contact system. The normally open contacts of the contactor, situated within the main circuit, will close. This connects the electric motor to the power source. 5. The three-phase load of the electric motor receives power, generating electromagnetic torque that causes the rotor to rotate. As a result, the electric motor initiates forward rotation. 1. When you release button SB2, the normally open contacts of the button return to their original position, opening the circuit. 2. Without a power supply, the auxiliary circuit loses power, causing the coil of the contactor KM, connected further down the circuit, to lose power as well. 3. With the coil of the contactor de-energized, the normally open contacts of the contactor within the main circuit reset, breaking the connection. 4. Without a power supply in the main circuit, the motor's load loses power, resulting in the dissipation of the generated electromagnetic torque. Consequently, the electric motor comes to a stop. We have analyzed the jogging control circuit comprehensively from its schematic diagram. We have discussed the components and functions present in both the main circuit and the auxiliary circuit. We have also examined the circuit's operation from the moment of pressing the jogging button to initiate action, until releasing the button for a stop of the circuit. This analysis allows us to comprehend the circuit's functionality. The jogging circuit serves as a fundamental building block in our study of three-phase asynchronous motor control circuits. Moving forward, let's delve into another type of control circuit known as the continuous duty control circuit to identify the differences and nuances between the two. That concludes this lesson. Thank you, everyone.